Rico. Uh, well, we have two minutes, so I will just go and introduce our next speaker, who is Professor Sabel Sinkbota, Professor of Zoology, Distinguished Professor of Herpetology. He has 41 years of teaching experience in, along with some administration for 10 years. He has published more than 75 research articles in national and international journals. Uh, he authored five books, contributed chapters in many textbooks, and most importantly, he described five new species of amphibians and species of reptile, and has a frog named after him, Maniferia syncopati, but with that Latin name, in recognition of his contribution in this field of Herpetology. So I um, guess uh, he would be worried about the challenges that urbanization in mountains are bringing to those poor reptiles and amphibians. So I will hand over to you and looking to hear uh, more about these challenges. Thank you. Um, yeah, we can see your screen, but we can not hear you. Uh, okay, yeah. thank you. Now we can hear you. Thank you, Dr. Omar. Okay, In fact, it's, my, it's privilege to be here. Um, right away, I will start with my presentation. It's nothing to do with amphibia and reptiles, which are my very, actually, favorite way, fields of work. Um, uh, for actually for this study of amphibian reptiles, I have visited the Eastern Himalaya, specifically Urunachal and Shikim. And today my topic is impact of urbanization in mountains and Indian scenario. Now, when we viewed urbanization, urbanization is in fact, viewed as shift of rural population to urban areas. And it is nothing but the continuous migration by which cities are grown. So it is very evident, specifically in the foothills, as well as the tourist centers and capital cities of uh, uh, this, the mountain system, this urbanization has occurred. But if we look back, what is urban area? There is no uniform definition for urban area, which is actually varied from countries to countries. In Argentina, it's defined as localities with 2000 inhabitants or more, in Sweden, it's slightly different, 200 inhabitants. And where the houses are 200 meters away, in Japan, it is called a she, where it is defined as 50,000 inhabitants or more, 60% or more houses located in the main built up areas and so on and so forth. And in my country, it is Statutory places with the municipality, corporation, cantonment board or notified town area. And one has to satisfy this, all the three criteria, 5,000 plus inhabitants, 75% of male working population engaged in non-agricultural practices and at least 400 inhabitants per square kilometer. So it is evident that there is no actually uniform definition for urban area. Now, if we look back, it's actually the process of urbanization leads to increase in population densities of cities and is continuing to do so. And at present, if we look back at the turn of the 20th century, only 15% was urbanized population but in 2007, it crosses mark of more than 50%. And 
an estimate being projected as by 2050, the developing world will have 64% urbanized population, whereas developed world will have 86%. And most of this urbanization will occur in Africa and Asia. Now, this transition from rural to the urban, actually uh, to rural to urban population, this have changed the way of we live. Living condition has been changed as well as work and travel. Now, why urbanization? Urbanization creates enormous social, economic, and environmental changes. When we talked about the social, social is social, sociological process of rationalization. In fact, it is the sociological process means the replacement of value, tradition, emotions, which are mainly guiding the behavior of the population being replaced by concept of rationality and reasons. And that has evident when people are transforming from rural to urban areas. It is also urbanization is also linked to modernization. This the modernization is the availability of modern facilities of living, recreation, transportation, and also industrialization. Large number of industries are recently being seen to be coming up in the mountain urban areas and making areas which are initially where forest cover with the setting up of industries that are gradually transforming into the urban areas. Now, this urbanization is not a modern phenomenon. It is historic in nature, and it is the process by which human social roots being transformed, whereby rural culture that's being replaced by rapidly by the urban culture. Now, if we look back at the history, until 18th century, there was an equilibrium between the vast majority of the population of rural and small centers of town population. In fact, the rural population, vast rural population were engaged in agriculture and the small centers of town population are involved in economic activity, primarily with trade and at markets and manufacture on a small scale. As a result, there was a ratio rural, vast rural to small urban population. And that was maintained at a fixed equilibrium. But this relationship was finally broken. And if you look at the graph, that's, it's for Indian, uh, actually, uh, uh, for the Indian scenario, the graph rural population gradually coming down with urban population going up. And it is estimated that by 2050, more will be the urban population than the rural one. And this relationship, there's the maintaining the fixed equilibrium was broken due to the unprecedented growth in urban population throughout the 19th and 20th century. And it is made mostly due to continuous migration from the countryside and also due to tremendous expansion of land areas or tremendous expansion of the urban areas. And as already stated, at the turn of the 20th century, there were just 15% was urbanite, but now we have more than 50% urbanite population. Now, mountains, when you say mountains, we know the mountains are known for their rich diversity. 
diversity of flora and fauna, as well as for the uniqueness, which we talked about uh, in the earlier session also, thus, thus are harboring large number of endemic flora and fauna. Now with population increase and also urbanization, these two phenomena are very closely interlinked. Great pressure has been exerted over the natural resources, flora, fauna, and other types of natural resources. And people starting utilizing this without concerning the sustainability as there is hardly any suitable alter alternative available for the people, livelihood alternative available for the people. And they have started utilizing the natural resources and also forest-based urban centers, industries, hydroelectric projects, and other developmental activities are geared up in the highly vulnerable mountain ecosystem. And requirements at the same time have been changed due to urbanization. People looked for better health, better education, and also looking for luxury, which were not there in the rural actually areas. And also there occurs a vast change in the land use pattern. Now, what are the causes? Causes may be unintentional. People may move in search of new areas, settle there and gradually converted the area into urban area or planned by individual, by society, or by the government, the state. Now, why urbanization? This is urbanization, living in a city, why people are moving, living in urban area, may be culturally and economically beneficial. Cities or the urban areas provide better variety of services, larger variety, more numerous and large number of varied job opportunities. Cities provide also better medical facilities and people for health, can, health has to move to these cities and also varied and high quality and there's the large diversity of educational opportunities. But there are also some harmful effect. That's social phenomena like alienation, stress, increased cost of living connected to an urban way of living. So there are both beneficial and harmful effect. And this harmful effect also, there's the urbanization causing certain harmful environmental phenomena also like urban heat island producing. In fact, the industrial and urban areas produced and retain heat. And cities are often one to three degrees Celsius warmer than the surrounding landscapes. And they're also a reduction with the high temperature reduction in soil moisture. And also there's the due to lack of or reduction in forest or vegetation cover, there's the carbon sequestration also get affected. And ultimately it forms a heat island. It's also urbanization also results into deterioration of urban actually water quality because large amount of biodegradable waste being produced and pollution occurs in addition to the eutrophication. And another is that there's the food waste, rapid growth of communities resulted into new challenges. And one of these is the production of food waste. The food waste are those which contains unused products, products which are at expiration, 
as well as spoilage. And that resulted into creation of health hazards, methane gas product produced, and that attracts the vectors of different types of diseases. Another effect of urbanization, which is habitat fragmentation. Habitat fragmentation, all of we know, results into formation of patches, ones that are continuous, and that may cause to dominance of anthropophile species, invasion of non-resident species, sometimes extinction or alienation of species, and decrease in species richness. When we talked about health and urbanization, this has two different effects. Rapid urbanization has led to increased non-communicable diseases associated with lifestyle. And also, but at the same time, it is associated with improvement of public hygiene, sanitation, and access to health care. Therefore, urbanization may have dual effect. In some, it is alleviating some problems of health. At the same time, it may accelerating certain other health-related problems in actually in the population. As I said, I will, it will be mostly on the actually urbanization impact in the Indian Himalayan region. If we look at Indian Himalayan region can be classified into three distinct zones separated by natural barriers between Nanga Parbat and the Sutlej River. It is the Western Himalaya, including Kashmir and Punjab. The second one is Central Himalaya between the uh, Sutlej and the Orun River, including Kumayan and part of Nepal Himalaya, though Nepal is politically a different region. And the Eastern Himalaya, that is between the Orun to Sanpo Brahmaputra River Basin, that is, include Shikin, Darjeeling, Bhutan, and Urnachal Himalaya. Now, there are two most important factors which are threatening the biodiversity of the uh, of the mountain area. That's our urbanization and population. Now, urban area may threaten ecosystem through direct habitat conversion and through various other indirect, actually, population-related factors that act as precursor. So population pressure is a very important factor in urbanization. Now, if we look at Indian Himalayan region, the urbanization is rapidly increasing. And the capital cities, which contributing only a very negligible fraction of land, that is only 0.5% of the Himalayan region, but accommodating a large human population, very small area, large human population, as a result of which there is increased population density. And it is as part available data of 2015. And if we look at the population density of various cities, mostly capital cities of this Indian Himalayan region and other important spots, from Nainital, Dehradun, Shimla, Srinagar, Gangtok, Grajiling, and Papunpare, that is including Itanagar, that's, we will see there is an increased population density over the years. And this has maximum population density being occurred in Srinagar, followed by Darjeeling and Dehradun. Now, 
but as a whole, the population density in terms of national figure in Indian Himalaya is less. But if we compare it with the uh, 2001 population census, it is phenomenal. There is an 145% increase. And there are eight mega districts, which in the Indian Himalayan region, which actually harboring more than 500 persons or individual per square kilometer. Now, population size of most of the district of Indian Himalayan region is less than actually uh, four lakhs, and that constitutes about 62 percent of the district. Whereas the rest 32 per, uh, the rest 38 percent of district contributing around 73 percent of the population and as already i have talked about that's the eight district which constitute about 14 percent are super saturated area of in terms of human population and most of these districts have urban pockets and rapidly growing population has been observed in the Indian Himalayan region, which is more than the national actually increase in population. This, if we look at 91, 2001, 1991, 2001 figure, the decadal population of Indian Himalayan region is much higher, the rate of increase in increase in population is much higher than that of the national. It was also in between 2001 to 2011, but projected actually census have shown that it's almost reached the upper asymptote and there is almost equal decadal growth in both Indian Himalayan region as well as in the national, actually uh, the national figure. And this rapidly grown urban population posing serious challenges and responsible for clearing of vegetation area, clearing of forest for human habitation, as well as for agriculture. And this, we know the loss of forest cover is associated with rapid decline in species richness, species diversity, species, and also associated with species ex extinction. And this urbanization has also had an effect in vanishing cultural values, including the ethnological practices. These ethnological practices, which were predominant among the inhabitants of the uh, areas, with the setting up of urban areas that are gradually losing. And this is actually a figure for the Uttarakhand area and where you will find there's only 61.45% of forest cover, others are used in different ways. And this actually vegetation loss and adverse effect on land cover also. Urbanization leads to developed communication, road being constructed, and large forest areas being removed, disturbing the stability of the hillsides, serious damage to the hydrologic system, and the vulnerable slopes are being cleared off. And there is frequent occurrence of landslide because sediments eroded away from the sites of road construction is 10 times greater than derived from agricultural land, 200 times greater than that of dust land, and 2,000 times greater than that from forest land. And this loose soil frequently being actually uh, come out down in the form of this landslide. And loss of vegetation cover creates ever dry condition and actually contributed to widespread desertification, affecting the livelihood of the people. 
also in the alpine region, high altitude area, there's a degradation of grassland has occurred. And this removal of turf, there's a turf is being removed is irreversible. And there is also a, uh, actually um, replacement of alpine meadow by the warm temperate coniferous forest. And there's the Indian Himalayan region, among others, is known to harbor diversity of wetlands and high altitude wetlands known for its diverse ecosystem services. And 42% of the total high altitude wetland is found of the country of India is actually uh, is from the Himalayan region. Now, many highland area, uh, uh, there's the highland, uh, there's the aquatic, uh, high altitude wetlands and their surrounding has emerged as center of attraction and unregulated tourism activity leading to issue of solid waste disposal and garbage management. And it is actually affecting the pristine environment. There is also due to unabated tourist flow, issues like water scarcity, social insecurity and lawlessness have cropped up. And the Indian city of Shimla, the capital city of Himachal Pradesh, the state of Himachal Pradesh, experienced in 2018, a condition round out of water. And it is, the local people perceived it as the effect of tourists and the local people told tourists to stay away from this area from Shimla. From, uh, Shimla. There are several studies have been carried out. Say, for example, natural resource sampled, uh, uh, Institute of Natural Resource, as well as Niti Ayog, Water Policy of Indian Himalayan region. All the studies have revealed that there is the springs of Himalaya, specifically the Eastern Himalaya, are drying up. According to the National actually Institute of National Resource, Natural Resource, 54% of the streams reduce discharge by 50% in Northeast India. And also Niti Ayog report, more than 3 million perennial springs in Indian Himalayan region states have either already dried up or become seasonal. So these are nothing but unplanned urbanization effect. And unplanned urbanization is causing significant changes in land use, land cover, and reducing the recharge areas of springs of the Himalayan, actually. Uh, uh, professor, uh, uh, yeah. uh, we have about three minutes for you to yeah, wrap I'm up. Just, so I'm, just concluding. I'm just concluding. Okay, thank if you. Traditional shifting cultivation has been replaced by growing permanent cash crops. And this has reverse impact because June cycle of regeneration is lost. And as because there is permanent cash crop big developed, it is that's the uh, human animal conflict is also being increasing. Changes in habitat quality associated with urbanization causes a reduction in the size of habitat patches and due to high frequency of traffic, both road and railway, wild animals often divert and there occur human animal conflict. Now the multidimensionality of population and environment is the relationship of this is influenced by technology, political and cultural factors and this urbanization has to be looked in a serious way so that urban areas should develop in a very sustainable way without giving much or without uh, impacting 
the environment, the culture of the local people, as well as other related factors. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for your actually kind attention. And thank you, Dr. Omar. Okay, thank you, Professor Sabel Sengdota, for your presentation and for uh, highlighting those challenges, uh, the social and environmental impacts of urbanization. And I hope that will inspire all of us, including our participants, to find innovative solution to bring uh, sustainable urbanization where people can enjoy the benefits of modernization and while they are protecting and safeguarding the environment. Um, maybe we'll have one minute for anybody wants to add a comment or ask a quick question before we move to our next session. Right. Uh, right, okay, so nobody raised their hand, so we'll move on to our next speaker, which is our